Welcome back. Bernie Sanders did something last night that no other 2020 Democrat has done yet. He appeared on a Fox News town hall. The self-described Democratic Socialist did not shy away from his agenda in front of the Fox audience, and he didn't pull any punches with the Fox moderators either. Take a listen to this standout moment as Sanders defends his Medicare for All proposal again on Fox. Healthcare is not free. You never heard me suggest that we're going to march. You just said it was going to be free for everyone. It's going to be free at the point of when you use it. Okay? And you go to. Why are you so shocked by this? Because someone's going to pay. Goes, somebody is going <laughs> to pay. Who are they? Who okay. Pays? Okay. One minute. One second. Okay. Relax. I'm just we'll be talking. Please. We'll get through this it's together. It's a common question. Okay. We had, okay. The, All right. we had so go. many email questions. Okay. Ask Senator Sanders how he is Fair going enough. to pay. Fair enough. I got it. Are people going to pay more in taxes? Yes. But at the end of the day, the overwhelming majority of people are going to end up paying less for health care because they're not paying premiums, co-payments, and deductibles. Sanders' appearance is getting a lot of attention. President Trump tweeted his opinion uh, and referred to Fox in We because he believes it belongs to him, apparently. And Pete Buttigieg apparently was paying attention as well. NBC News has learned that the South Bend mayor is in talks with Fox for a town hall of his own. So let's check in on the presidential primary race, as I've been uh, enjoying doing over the past few months. Uh, I got Marcos Molitsis with us. He's, of course, the founder of the progressive websites Daily Coast. And in the current leaders and his readers, 2020 Democratic Straw Poll, the two leaders are the two Bs that I just mentioned there, Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. Uh, Marcos, welcome back. Good to see you, sir. Good evening. When we last spoke, uh, we were all still learning how to pronounce Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> I'm still uh, working on and, it. <laughs> and, and, uh, and that's fair. But I'm curious of, you saw today's story in the New York Times about Democratic hand-wringing over Bernie Sanders. Ironically, I've never mistaken you as a member of the establishment. And at the same time, you have your own hand-wringing when it comes to Bernie Sanders. What do you make of his strength this early in the process? And is he stronger now than you expected him to be a year ago? I don't think he's that much stronger. I almost think he's where he's he's at in the Daily Coast straw polls. He's around 30 to 40 percent, given you know, uh, depending on when the straw poll takes place. Uh, and back in in uh, 2016, he was in the 60 percent range back then. So mm -hmm. clearly, we have a much wider field. There's a lot of great progressive candidates. It's a lot more fragmented. It's not so clearly delineated between an establishment and Bernie. Now there's mm -hmm. all sorts of flavors. And I think people are still making up their minds. And Bernie has a very clear, strong, motivated, uh, loyal core of support. And that's incredibly valuable. I mean, he led in fundraising this this uh, first quarter. Right. So it, it's, it's coming through for him. And it's small dollar donors, more so than any other candidate. So it's pretty legit. Uh, is it enough to get him to where he needs to be? Uh, I don't know. I actually think he's maxed out. And uh, the question is, does he hold that support? So far, he is. A lot of way, uh, long way to go, though. I want to play another moment from his Fox Town Hall last night where, where uh, he sort of took control of the audience, or at least it's clear that if, if Fox... Sean Hannity didn't pick the audience, that's for sure. Take a listen. <laughs> I want to... Ask the audience a question, if you could raise your hand here. A show of hands of how many people get their insurance from work, private insurance, right now. How many get it from private insurance? Okay, now of those, how many are willing to transition to what the senator says, a government-run system? So does that convince you that more Democrats ought to spend some time on, with the Fox audience? I, I don't think that was the Fox audience. Uh, I think that was pretty much a, a pro-Bernie audience, the people who tuned in clearly pro-Bernie. I mean, uh, uh, it's exciting to see him on TV, and it, it's actually a smart move for him personally, but it just goes to show once again that he's not a team player. Progressives have been working very strongly uh, over the last year to really educate people about how Fox is just basically Donald Trump's propaganda arm. I mean, like you said, he called it... Uh, well, let I me pl we. do the tweet. Let's not you and I misquote him. Let's okay. put it up real quick. So weird to watch crazy Bernie on Fox News. Not surprisingly, at Brett Baer in the audience, and he put that in quotes, was so smiley and nice. Very strange. And now we have Donna Brazil. Anyway, yeah. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Marcus. Yeah, no. I mean, he, he clearly considers it uh, the network to be his, and it's operated as such. I mean, he's, he's got every reason to believe that it's his network since they basically have become his propaganda arm. And uh, you talked about earlier in the sec in the show about the hateful campaign, anti-Muslim campaign against Representative mm -hmm. Omar, and Fox News is right in the mix of it. The biggest megaphone promoting that whole nasty demonization so a, of an entire class of people. So. By uh, going on Fox News, basically what Bernie Sanders is saying, that all that is okay, and has undermined efforts to marginalize Fox to where it belongs, which is off in the margins. So you would tell, is it a mistake in your mind for Pete Buttigieg to line up a town hall? Oh, I absolutely think it's a, it's a mistake. I mean, it's, it's not a mistake for him personally, but if he wants to be a team player, and he's somebody not only who is, is, is surging in the field and has become a real yeah. contender, he ran for the Democratic Party chairmanship last time. So he's somebody who presumably wants to be a team player, but he's not acting as one if he's going to go on Fox. Other networks would be happy to host him. No reason to go to Fox. Well, if the argument is you're trying to talk to these folks that are getting this propaganda 24 hours a day and you get to break through it for an hour, is that not a reason to do that? I, I mean, that's presuming that people didn't click off and, and, uh, uh, and stop watching. Uh, but re even if they, they are watching, I mean, you can, you can say that. We're going to have an entire presidential campaign, and these people are going to live in, in their bubble. They're going to close shop. They're not movable. Fox News viewers are the most reliably Republican uh, constituency, according to Pew Research. I mean, this is, this is about the biggest predictor of somebody who's going to vote Republican is a Fox News viewer. The idea mm -hmm. that these people are reachable when we have an entire uh, class of demographics that are aren't voting right. that are, are truly uh, friendly liberal demographics, uh, people of color, single women, right. uh, young voters. Those are the people that we need to be reached, reaching because if we get them to vote, there's nothing Fox News and Donald Trump and the Republican Party can do to win. And we saw that last year in the, in the okay. midterm elections. And uh, that's the ticket to 2016, uh, 2020. It's focusing on our base. What do you make of Pete Buttigieg overall, the rise of, of him? And I think... A month ago, you and I probably, I probably thought you and I would be talking about Beto O'Rourke uh, at this point. <laughs> and I guess the question is, is this just going to be a monthly thing for a while, in your view? Or did Buttigieg essentially out Beto Beto? Uh, it, it's kind of remarkable seeing the collapse of Beto. I mean, he's become a complete non-entity, and it's predominantly... He's got like you plenty say, of it's, money. It's, I mean, let's... Uh, are we over... Don't, be careful there. He certainly has raised uh, cash. Money. Uh, Mayor Pete had no money when he when he struck gold on a viral moment, and and you're right. This is this is a, a world where the next viral moment can decide uh, who the, the the next sort of rising star is. So, fair enough. Uh, Mayor Pete has an incredible uh, resume. He is it, he's smart, clearly very smart. Uh, he's 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 got great framing. He communicates well. So he's doing a lot of the things that that I think you need. I mean, I, I'm I'm a critic. Because of his lack of expertise, I mean, he's a small town liberal college mayor. Uh, I'm not sure that's the step towards the presidency. Just because Donald Trump broke politics doesn't mean yeah. that, that Democrats need to follow suit. But that said, he injects something fresh and new and exciting to the race, and, and that is, has its own value. And whether it has lasting power or not, yeah. I think he's motivating people. And to me, that's the most important factor moving ahead is do you motivate people? And whether I agree or not is irrelevant. Are liberals fired up and... and organizing. And, and I think that, that Pete Buttigieg, <laughs> still working That's on it. That's work. You're doing well. <laughs> I, I think he's doing a, a, a great job on that. And actually, I also think that that sort of negates the whole argument for Iowa and New Hampshire to go first, this idea that it would, it would catapult small players. I think in yeah. this world with social media, you don't need that anymore. I think uh, you can use the internet to catapult yourself. And, I think and Mayor Pete has shown that. That is uh, absolutely true. Although, you know, you break my late father's heart. He's from Waterloo. It's been fun to have Iowa first, but that is an excellent point there uh, to end on. Marcos Melitzis, uh, always good to see you. Thank you for coming on and sharing your views of the race. I look forward to continuing this throughout the year. Oh, always a pleasure. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.